Greetings and welcome back, gentles and ladiesmen, to a belated installment of Classic Sonic Remake Rebrink. I'm X Paradigm Gamer, and back in January and February of this year, I released a series of ROR episodes comparing the Sega versions of Sonic 1, 2, and CD to the Taxman and Stealth versions for iOS and Android. And ever since, I've been getting tons of requests to look at this little piece of plastic right here, Sonic the Hedgehog Genesis for the GBA. To tell you the truth, I had planned to include this game in the original Classic Sonic Marathon, but due to time constraints and an inability to get good looking Game Boy Player footage, I ended up scrapping it. So what is Sonic Genesis, or Sonic 1 Advance as some people call it? Well, it's basically a remake of the original 1991 Sonic the Hedgehog game for the Game Boy Advance, which in itself doesn't sound too bad. Seeing as the GBA already had its own versions of the classic Mario and Donkey Kong Country titles, it's not surprising that Sega would want to re-release one of their 16-bit classics on the 32-bit handheld. What is surprising is just how late in the system's life cycle this game happened to come out. November 14th, 2006, the same day that Sonic the Hedgehog 2006 crashed and burned on PS3 and Xbox 360. By that point, the Nintendo DS and Sony PSP had already been out for two years. So why Sega decided to remake only the first game and on GBA, I have no idea. Sonic Genesis and Sonic 06 were meant to celebrate the series' 15th anniversary, with one game gesturing to a next-gen future and the other to the series' glorious beginning. And just as Sonic 06 corrupted the franchise's future, so too did Sonic Genesis tarnish the game that started it all. This game, along with the likes of Earthworm Jim 1 and 2 on GBA, is considered one of the absolute worst ports slash remakes of all time. As many of you have pointed out so far, all of the titles I've reviewed on Remake or Rebrand have never scored lower than a remake score, with a handful achieving a coveted replay status. Some of you have disagreed with me on some of these games, saying that they deserved a remass score, or even a rebreak. In retrospect, I do think I should have rated Super Mario Deluxe a reman, but I didn't have that score at the time. Regardless, allow me to remedy all those concerns here and now. It's high time that this review segment took a look at a remake that was decidedly bad, for the relativity if nothing else. This is Sonic the Hedgehog Genesis Remake or Rebreak. Now, I've always considered Remake or Rebreak to primarily be a review segment. It's about examining classic games of the past, seeing how they hold up today, and seeing how the remakes build on and improve upon the original experience for a new generation of hardware. Many people have asked me why it is that I can't just talk about the differences between versions and call it a day. I don't do that because to me it's a half-assed comparison. If I don't actually review the game, I can't make a meaningful comparison or really discuss the game's lasting legacy. In this case, however, I've already made a pretty elaborate review of the original game as part of a previous ROR episode, so this time around I'll be focusing a lot more on the remake. If you would like my more in-depth impressions of Sonic the Hedgehog for the Sega Genesis, then I suggest clicking this in to watch ROR Sonic the Hedgehog, Sega Genesis vs. iOS and Android. For the sake of this review, all you need to know is that I happen to really enjoy Sonic 1 quite a bit. In fact, out of all the five classic Sonic games, Sonic 1 ranks second only to Sonic 3 and Knuckles in my eyes. The Taxman and Stealth version is definitely my favorite, but the Genesis version still remains a fun game to this day despite some dated difficulty design. For this episode, I'll be looking into one simple question. Given all the different ports, remakes, and emulations of Sonic 1, that are available today, does the GBA version have anything to offer that the others don't? In a word, no. For a lot of bad games, the degree of awfulness is usually exaggerated or romanticized for entertainment value. Sure, the games usually are bad for the reasons a reviewer will describe, but sometimes the badness is so oversold that you might actually be disappointed when you play it for yourself. Despite Sonic Genesis as being universally panned and disliked by the gaming community, I think it's actually one of the few bad games whose awfulness has been undersold. As the great James Rolfe once said, there's a difference between seeing shit and playing shit. While I certainly try to do it justice, Sonic the Hedgehog Genesis is even worse than I could ever possibly describe it. I know that there is a small population of people who are willing to defend this game, but I seriously think that this game is objectively one of the worst games ever made, without a doubt. And I think that that becomes apparent right from the very beginning. Let's kick things off with DAC gameplay. The opening sequence begins promisingly enough, even though the classic Sega voice recording cuts off a little abruptly, but then the title screen shows up. <laughs> wow. If the goal was to make a title screen that perfectly sums up the game it represents, then Sonic Team did a perfect job. 
After selecting your preferred mode, the game begins. And right from the very first frame, you can see one of the game's biggest flaws. A lot of people commented on my previous Game Boy Advance episodes telling me that they felt that those remakes were victimized by screen crunch. I'll admit that on occasions, the screen size could be less than optimal, but for the most part, I found that the GBA remakes I've played for ROR are generally not hampered by poor visibility. Sonic Genesis, on the other hand, has got to have the worst case of screen crunch I've ever seen. Only Donkey Kong Kong Land 1 for the Game Boy comes close, but that game came out in a time where game design for handheld systems was in its formative years. When Sonic Genesis came out in 2006, there was absolutely no excuse for this. Look at how big the sprites and backgrounds are! The original Genesis games already had a mild case of screen crunch to begin with due to the camera permanently fixing Sonic in the dead center of the TV, but imagine trying to play any of those games with Sonic taking up almost a ninth of the screen! Avoiding incoming enemies and stage hacks hazards is only possible if you inch your way across the screen as slowly as you can. Yeah, how about that folks, a Sonic game that actively discourages going fast. Thankfully not going fast is pretty easy to do in this game, and I'll bet you can see why. The frame rate is so atrocious that it would make Spyro enter the Dragonfly blush. If there's ever more than one sprite on the screen at once, the frame rate will instantly take a dump. And if the game is trying to pull off a fancy graphical effect, it drops down to just a few frames per second. Because of the inconsistent frame rate, Sonic's speed and momentum will raise and lower at completely random intervals, which can really fuck you over. While this would hypothetically make it easier to see things coming in the cramped camera, the fact that you barely have any control over your momentum makes it hard to react properly. Even if you can actually manage to go fast, the lack of frames cause things to become disorienting and even nauseating. And that's not even mentioning the player physics and control, which are so bad to the point that controlling Sonic in a competent fashion is barely possible. This is is one of those cases where you can't imagine how bad the control is unless if you play the game for yourself. The big problem is that even barring the frame rate, your acceleration is completely off. Sonic can jump against a wall at full speed and will continue at full speed after he reaches the bottom. You can change Sonic's direction in midair almost instantaneously. Jumping works fine enough, but it's still possible to bounce up on top of the Doctor's Eggmobile. In this part here, I'm ducking on a slope and Sonic isn't curling into a ball and rolling down it. When it comes to remakes that are coded from scratch, I'm fine if the control isn't 100% the same. As long as the game plays more or less like the original, I'm satisfied. The control in Sonic Genesis, on the other hand, is awful no matter how you look at it. Part of what makes classic Sonic fun to play is the tight control and excellent physics system. Take these things away, and you've effectively neutered the whole experience. Beyond the screen crunch, frame rate, and control, dim aesthetics have suffered a downgrade as well. The graphics remain as bright, colorful, and cartoony as they were in the original, so I can at least say that Sonic Genesis is a nice looking game, but that still doesn't change the fact that the graphics are too large for the GBA screen. Good graphics can only do so much for a game when they compromise the gameplay. And then there's the music. You already know what the title theme sounds like, and the rest of the soundtrack doesn't fare much better. Yeah, Super Mario Advance 2 isn't sounding so bad now, is it? As with previous reviews, I'm conscious that the GBA sound hardware is way different from both the Genesis and the Super Nintendo. Making this harder is that authentic Sega Genesis music has a pretty distinct sound, one that's pretty difficult to replicate on different sound hardware. That being said, I don't think it's reasonable to expect Sonic Genesis on GBA to perfectly mimic the original Genesis soundtrack. What I did expect, however, was that Sonic Team would at least try to make the music sound good by GBA standards, and they've unfortunately failed with that as well. That's not to say that some songs aren't okay, like Marble Zone, but no matter how you listen to it, it's below the standards of the Game Boy Advance. And then there are the sound effects, which range from acceptable to pretty awful. The Badnik Boop sound, for example, has been replaced with the experience meter sound from the GBA Pokemon games. Again, the sound effects didn't have to sound exactly like the original to be good, but I know that this game could have and should have sounded better than it does. Is it even worth talking about Dem special stages? Given the fact that reaching these things was tough enough in the original game, you can imagine that trying to reach the end of the stage with 50 rings is a lot harder when you can barely see what you're doing and the controls don't work. Assuming you can actually manage to get in one, this is the first thing you'll see. 
yeah, it speaks for itself. Beyond that, your jumps feel too instantaneous and Sonic reacts to bumpers in a weird way. If you can actually make it to the Emerald, however, you will be pleased to find that crystal barriers seem to disappear faster, which does make getting at the Emerald a little easier. Still, the special stages suffer from the same problem as the normal gameplay. The controls don't approximate the original very well. With all that being said, you may be wondering if Sonic Genesis adds anything new to the existing gameplay. As I mentioned before, the game has two modes. Original Mode and Anniversary Mode. The only difference I found is that Sonic can use the Spin Dash in the Anniversary Mode, but can't in the Classic Mode. The Spin Dash itself controls more or less how you'd expect, but using it is risky considering the awful camera. Since Sonic Genesis actively discourages and impedes speed, the Spin Dash is only useful for those slopes and hills that you'd normally have to backtrack to get through in the original game. On top of this, the game also sports a save feature, but it works nothing like it did in Sonic CD or 3 and Knuckles. After picking your mode, you'll be presented with a level select, which which is convenient, I guess. As you play through the game, you'll get save messages after every level. If you select quit from the pause menu, you'll be able to continue from the level where you left off. If you get a game over, however, you're just sent back to the menu and forced to pick your zone from the level select. You'll be able to continue from the zone, yeah, but all your emeralds are gone, which makes the save feature worthless for anything other than a quick save on a particular act if you have to shut off the game and return to it later. Even with the more upfront level select feature, this game is a real pain to finish. In the original game, there were limited continues, and losing all of your lives meant restarting the game from the beginning. First time players would have to keep a decent stock of lives and continues if they wanted to beat the game in one sitting. In this game, however, the new level select essentially allows you to continue from the beginning of the last zone you reached. But that doesn't really change things much. Why? Labyrinth Zone. I don't really mind Labyrinth Zone much in the original game, but here it's so bad that it's nearly unplayable. In the original game, Labyrinth Zone was slow due to Sonic's speed lowering in water, and seeing as Sonic was already pretty slow in the GBA remake to begin with, you can only imagine how slow he is underwater. And seeing as Labyrinth Zone is flooded with water, it's basically a giant endurance. I mean, just watch the footage I'm putting in front of you right now. Do you see how unbearably slow that is? It's even worse when you're actually playing it. And just like in the original game, the boss in Act 3 requires you to bob and weave through spears and fireballs while underwater. Because of how slow Sonic is and how gimped his control is, this is as far as I've ever gotten in this version. You can continue from the beginning of Labyrinth Zone as many times as you want, but that means you have to spend another 20 minutes slogging through all three acts just to get another stab at the boss. And if you die in him three times, you gotta make that slog all over again. The only way you'll possibly stand a chance of winning is to come in with a big stock of lives and continues, which are all back at the beginning of the game. So in that regard, it's no different from the original game. If you can't win Labyrinth Zone in your first try with a stock of lives and continues, it's pretty much game over, because you'll have to replay Green Hill Zone and Marble Zone to have enough lives to take on the Labyrinth Zone boss. Too bad I wasted them all on the Marble Zone boss. So, fuck it. I'm sure that if I wanted it hard enough, I could brute force my way through Labyrinth Zone and play the rest of the game, but I don't really see the point. I mean, as much as I may not have appreciated some of the difficulty design of Sonic 1 and 2 on the Genesis, I was still enjoying myself enough to want to push through and finish them. Sonic Genesis, on the other hand, is just not worth it. So, remake or re-break? What's the verdict? Yeah, re-break, obviously. Now, to be clear, a remake or port doesn't have to be as bad as Sonic Genesis to earn a re-break score, but I'll be damned if this wasn't one of the worst recreations of a video game I have ever seen. The frame rate is abhorrent, the screen crunch is pestiferous, the control is atrocious, and the music is absolutely heinous. Virtually every aspect of this game, besides maybe the graphical quality, has some kind of flaw. As a remake, it fails to resurrect the same quality standard as the original due to incompetent design and an abundance of technical failures. People are welcome to criticize the Super Mario Advance remakes and the Donkey Kong Country remakes, but at the end of the day, they were at least acceptable, if not on par with or exceeding the originals. This remake does absolutely nothing that the original didn't do better. A lot of people like to dismiss Sonic Genesis from consideration as the worst Sonic game by saying that while Sonic Genesis is just a really bad version of Sonic 1, games like Shadow, Boom, and 06 are their own original turds. Now, I can't speak for everyone as to which Sonic game is the most offensive, but if we're talking explicitly about which one is the most poorly made or least appealing, then my vote goes to Sonic Genesis, without a doubt. 
If my friend Ryan Mathis has taught me anything, it's that even in the absolute worst Sonic games, there are a handful of things that were decent or appealing. Rise of Lyric had decent level design and character animations, Secret Rings had strong aesthetics and presentation, Sonic 06 had a damn good soundtrack, and even Shadow had decent gunplay even if it didn't belong there. All of those other games may be their own original turds, but at least it was possible to get some enjoyment out of them. Sonic Genesis, on the other hand, has absolutely nothing going for it whatsoever. Any enjoyment you could possibly eke out of it would taste so much sweeter if you experienced it in any other version of Sonic 1. And no, I don't think the fact that it's a remake or port excludes it from consideration as the worst Sonic game. After all, Sonic Boom was a spin-off game, and that hasn't stopped people from considering it the worst. If we can consider a spin-off game that was licensed off of a TV show and wasn't even developed by Sonic Team, then why can't we consider this god-awful remake of a beloved main series game that was ported by Sonic Team and Themselves. If anything, the fact that it's a remake makes this game all the more worthless. Sonic 06 was an ambitious project that was soiled by time constraints. They were trying to do something that had never been done before, and it ended up not working out. Same thing goes for Boom. With Sonic Genesis, all they had to do was make something mildly as good as the original, and they couldn't even manage that. And for that reason, it's really worth playing. I'm not even kidding. As bad as I've made this game sound, the only way to truly understand how bad it is, is to play it for yourself. And I dare you. It's 10 bucks online, and there are ways to play it for even cheaper if you know what I mean. Whatever you have to do, play this game. I dare you to play Labyrinth Zone in this game and tell me that Sonic Boom is worse. I triple dog dare you. Good luck. With that being said, it's time to wrap up another summer of videos. I was hoping to have published more content than I did, but life happens sometimes and there's not much you can do about it. Between this and my Let's Play channel, Game Mavericks, this has been one hell of a busy summer. Still, I was able to review the classic Donkey Kong Country games, participate in four streams, gain a new appreciation for Jack 2, come back to the Zelda series, and play through five whole games on Game Mavericks. It wasn't easy making it all happen, but knowing that there's a decent crowd of folks out there who enjoy watching my content makes it all worth it. So I'd like to thank each and every one of you for watching. It's been fun. As for what comes next, well, unfortunately it won't be coming anytime soon. College is starting up again, and I have no idea if I'm going to have time to work on reviews with all the crap I've got going on. As for what you can expect when I do come back, well, let's just say I'm not done talking about a certain blue hedgehog just yet. There's a certain trio of games I've been dying to review ever since I finished the classic series. And someone just might be helping me out. Until then, I'm X Paradigm Gamer, and I hope you all enjoyed the review. Thank <laughs> you.